possibly in the event that it just decides to end itself early. Uh, but we'll hope that that doesn't happen. Kind of at the mercy of the weather. Assuming that I'm correct about my wild assumption as to what's going on. Uh, we'll see. You know what I wish I had the skill for? That I have no idea how to acquire the skill for. Is, um... Cell Shaded Minis. So I've seen that before, like Cell Shaded body paint and cell shaded miniatures and like how would you even start to attempt something like that it's so crazy I, the closest that i'm probably ever going to get is my uh my Mega Man x miniature a uh, little little statuette uh which turned out pretty okay actually it came out pretty close to the original art and Sort of given up the idea of ever doing better. <laughs> I am, apparently. Thank you for being patient. Um, yeah, currently, best theory is that the storm knocked something out somewhere. Um, where we've got a big storm here, and it's been going on kind of off and on for the last, I don't know, what, three days or so? A while. It's just been a little bit ugly over here. Yeah, I'm not sure if this like light light uh light wash trick that I've used here is exactly what I wanted, but I think it's good, even if it's not the intention. And I think I can accept it, you know. I think I can accept the quality. It's an interesting experiment, and certainly I can't think of a better mini to try it out on than this guy. Even if it doesn't look right, I think it'll still look okay. And thank goodness for that. Okay, that's both arms, head, back, let's do his legs, and then I think we're done with most of him. Hmm, not a moment too soon. Just notice the time. Paint that I mixed actually does wonders covering up my mistakes. Even just dry brushing it dulls down the red quite a lot. So we're just going to dry brush up his legs, which are, of course, exceeding wrinkly. And 
And actually, they do look quite a lot like real elephant legs, which is why it is very strange that the rest of him does not look very realistic. <laughs> It's like his legs are showing up for a completely different miniature than the rest of his body. Except maybe like his face and ears, maybe. But like his arms, his torso, none of that looks remotely elephant-like. In terms of like realistic elephants. It's like, this ain't that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that either. Just very silly. Like everything else about battle stations. The profundity of the campiness is inexpressible. Okay, that should do all right. A little bit more to fix that error on the back of his leg. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now we'll move on to the metallics. And then right about at the end, we're going to give his eyes just a little bit of that super dark brown again. Bring those back to the original color, since that's actually pretty much exactly what we want. Possibly highlight just ever so slightly, but not much. We're going to mix up some gunmetal and paint his hammer, his uh, armor plating, and his gun with that. Uh, the gun and the hammer are going to get a little bit of additional color, um, probably just red. And then all of the metal will also get dry brushed with silver. And brighten up the right spots. Okay. We're probably going to run late tonight, but that's okay because we started super late. Okay, now where do I want to start? Start with the handle and the rest of his hammer and then move on from there So as we've, uh, as we discuss pretty much nightly on this stream, uh, I can't paint details and talk. 
So I'm just painting like a broad area or just doing dry brushing. I can chat while I do that, but I'm really bad at talking and painting carefully simultaneously. Um, it's a little bit like that Good Mythical Morning bit where uh, Link loses the ability to operate a knife and talk at the same time. I, I actually get that. Like, it's hilarious to see him do it because he's such a doofus about it and can't, like, and won't admit that he can't do it. But, but like, I have the same thing. Like, I can't, I can't talk and do stuff. That is okay, you're reading my Twitter. Well, I appreciate that you're reading my Twitter. Um, I, I post there, not inordinately, but more than I ever thought I would. <laughs> Which means you're reading Twitter. That's fair, yeah. I mean, I don't really say anything there that I wouldn't say anywhere else. Although a lot of it is retweets from Jesse. Uh... Thank you, I appreciate that. It's like stream announcements, reposts from stuff that Jesse has retweeted and sometimes reposts like retweets of Jesse's stuff. And then like occasionally politics. Okay. Alright, so we got the hammer handle. Now let's do the hammer head. I think I'm probably want to just keep this uh just the just the silver, just the gun metal. Um I'm gonna go over it with a black wash. Make these uh, these crevices stand out a little bit better because I think they're really cool looking. Uh, however, I don't think that I'm gonna paint on all the crazy colors that the concept art shows. Okay. Um, rest assured that if I get myself sorted out as far as like making Avara stuff, that will be going on Twitter. <laughs> um, in the desperate hopes of finding people who talk about Avara and don't require me to put up an IRC client. <laughs> uh, I feel bad about that, but... But I'm just, honestly, I'm just not in IRC very much. It's like that environment is hard for me to socialize in effectively. I feel like I just get lost, or I dominate the conversation completely, and both of those make me feel bad. <laughs> I mean, I guess that is one way to solve that, yeah, no. <laughs> also, just to put it out there, if either of you guys, uh, watch the Ogscast or watch the Ogscast, I strongly recommend looking up Toasted Tomatoes and Super Duck, both of whom post uh, Yogscast remixes, which are hilarious. Um, a lot of them are for, like, the Jingle Jam streams. As well they should be. Um, but there is some of the, uh, 
some of their older content reflected as well. Like the, the actual Yogscast channel stuff. But most of that's kind of old. I still watch them pretty regularly. Um, but I've had to get a lot more picky about which of their videos I watch because they just produce so much content collectively. So, like, I really enjoyed um, Duncan's Project Ozone videos. That was an excellent series. And then he's running another Project Ozone series currently, but I haven't started it on that because I just haven't had time. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of similar. Like, I've actually gotten really into their GTA Five stuff and uh, Trouble in Terrace Town. Um... But, like, that's that's mostly just kind of watching the shenanigans, not... Because, like, that's that's where that kind of content migrated. Like, they don't have... They don't post much Minecraft on the main channel, and um, what they do post is usually not the same kind of thing that it used to be. Um, they are running Diversity 3 right now with uh, Shin, Lewis, and Simon, and that is a delight. find that series very entertaining. It's uh it's very like classic Yogg's cast kind of stuff. Lots of them losing their minds because they're really bad at Minecraft despite playing it constantly for ten years. Arguably professionally. Professionally bad at Minecraft, yeah. That's that's a pretty good way to explain it. It's it's really funny, like, especially with Lewis, because like when he decides to actually try, and usually this is only in like heavily modded sessions, is like what happens is he'll do really, really well at like automation, so he'll be solely responsible for them progressing sometimes. Um, Duncan does the same thing to a, to a lesser extent. He's less extreme about, like, focusing on just one thing. Um, but then, like, he goes to the trivia branch of Diversity 3 and, like, doesn't know how many blocks can have silverfish in them. Like, he just does not know stuff about Minecraft, which is hilarious. <laughs> It's just so, like, dissonant, because you'd think, after all this time and all of this experience, that they'd remember, like, they'd retain something about it, you know? And oftentimes, not always, but often, they just don't. And something about that, to me, is just very funny. Um, I guess another recommendation while I'm at it, the uh, the Vine Sauce uh, Corruption Stockpile videos on YouTube are compiled from his streams, and they are excellent. The most recent one, I've seen it, what, three times now? And I have not stopped just absolutely losing my mind laughing at it. It's so funny. There's a bunch of stuff from Mother 3. Um, there's a bunch of stuff from uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which, oh man, I need to not talk about that because I'm starting to chuckle and it's making my brush work bad. Um, but yeah, it's 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 good. Yeah, those those videos have my highest recommendation. They are so good. Very entertaining.
And of course, I also just get such a kick out of watching the Yogg's cast play um, Open TTD because they are very bad at it. Lewis is like pretty okay at the actual game. Duncan becomes pretty okay when he starts building planes. Shin is terrible at the game, but is very good at disrupting other people's fun. Uh, and it's usually those three that play together most. So you've got Lewis tryharding. Duncan invariably crashes a train at least once. Usually a lot of times. So he doesn't understand signaling despite having played it every year for the stream. And having exactly the same thing happen every time. Um, you would think he'd learn, but no. <clears throat> I don't know, there's just something very gratifying about being able to predict, like, you know, you, you, go, you go to the stream, and they play Open TDD, at, you know, on the 1st of December every year. And every year, on the 1st of December, a couple hours into that stream, one of Duncan's trains crashes and explodes. Every year. And it's never... It's never because he's, like, trying to do the thing, you know? He's not... He's not... Just doing it to do it. It happens because he's just really bad at the game. Really consistently. Despite enjoying it so much, he just never learns, which is... It's very entertaining. I don't feel like it should be, but it is. I feel like I shouldn't, like, laugh at people for being bad at what they do, but... You know, sometimes there's something to that. get some of this excess pigment off of here. Yeah, no, I, I realize that's the business model, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't... It's not that I feel bad laughing at their shenanigans, it's that I feel bad laughing specifically about the fact that they don't seem to learn well. Which is, again, like, I, I get it, that's, that's the business model, and like, you know, I, I understand that I probably shouldn't feel bad about that part, but... I don't know, still feels mean to me. Perhaps I am just sensitive about such things, but... You know, I don't think that's such a bad thing to be. Yes, no, that is very true. That is very, very true. What I've always found so interesting about their, um, their modded Minecraft games is that, like, that some of them will, and some of them won't, actually go way out of their way to learn. So, like, Lewis, and to a lesser extent, Duncan, will actually, like, look stuff up outside of the session. You know, when, whenever they stop recording, he'll, like, go and look stuff up and actually learn the mechanics and know what he's doing. You know, often he'll still not understand them correctly, but, like, like he tries to get it. And then others of them, Shin in particular, just, like... He he lives to disrupt other people's fun, which is on occasion extremely funny, and often is just like, dude, seriously, if I was playing with you, I would never talk to you again. Because <laughs> like you just, 
his entire audience appeal is that he frustrates his friends. Which works great for like a, you know, like a sitcom character or an online persona, but like I would hate being friends with him in real life, honestly. It's just very, I don't know, it's just very strange to me that they like take their personas so far. It's, it's hard to tell what is just them and what is them trying to be funny, you know? Yeah, that's... I mean, like, that's not exactly what I'm talking about, but that definitely fits the pattern. What I'm talking about is that, like, like when they're playing GTA V and doing races, like, Shin is not very good at it, but he doesn't... Like, he usually doesn't even try. As soon as the slightest little hiccup happens, you know, and he'll just be like, okay, I'm done, I'm just gonna sit here and, you know, and just constantly bomb anybody that comes anywhere near this part of the track. And, like, it, it ruins everyone else's game. Like, the, the skilled players don't get to demonstrate their skill because the trollsy guy is just being a troll. And, like, for a while, I actually had a hard time watching videos with Shin in them because he just frustrated me so much with dishonorable play. Because, like, that's a really important principle to me. You know, you, you should always be trying to play fair. Like, I, I, I just feel like that's the thing that a good person does, you know? Always play to win, and always take advantages only that are just. You know, so if somebody doesn't know what they're doing, you're obliged to help them because you're trying to find a better opponent. So, like, with Shin, you know, when he just, like, knocks somebody off of something conveniently or, or like, genuinely outplays someone in a way that's funny. You know, so I, I don't even know what series it was from, but there was one where, um, where they were doing, like, a, a Minecraft Skyblock type thing. And, uh, and Shin managed to find... An invisible trap, or like a like a trap block that you set down wherever you want it, and then you can put another block on top of it. It takes on the appearance of that block, but has no collision. He put these in the middle of their bridges, and that was really funny. Like that's a really clever thing to do. That's like genuinely just outplaying his friends and utilizing the. Utilizing a mechanic that they didn't realize was there and had a difficult time dealing with. So, like, Lewis goes sprinting across this bridge and just falls through it for no obvious reason. It's completely solid, all of the blocks look the same, but just some of them are holes. You know? And no one else saw it happen at first. And it took him, like, half an hour to work out exactly which blocks were a problem. Or, um... That was the current Project Ozone, okay. Yeah, I, I suspected it might have been. Um, but in the previous Project Ozone, he... Uh, there, were, there were, like, a... It was heavily chance cube-based, um, where, like, you break a cube and then something weird happens. Um, and it had, like, custom music by DJ Aristotle. Oh, hello. Oh, Pedgun was playing in, in the current Ozone series? I think I need to see that. I gotta start watching that. Um, but in the in like the previous Project Ozone series, one of the best things that Shin managed to set up was he had one of these ridiculously loud music discs by DJ Aristotle. Super loud, super obnoxious rave music. I personally didn't mind the song, but like Lewis and uh, and Duncan hated it. So what he does is he puts a bunch of chance cubes down in the middle of their base, like digs out a hole, and places them such that... Oh gosh, did they really? Um, but what he did was, was he, uh, he, how much more? Um, 
We need to put a wash onto the metallic bits that I just did, dry brush them, um, add a little bit of color to his eyes and to his gun. Uh, possibly like a quick, actually a quick um, dry brush over this hammerhead with like a red color might be good. Um, but nothing, nothing too complicated, just some quick stuff. So, uh, first thing, we need black wash. So let's pull that guy out. Get a few drops of that. One, two, three. That'll be plenty for what I'm doing here. Yeah, sorry I'm running late. Just started so late, and I want to finish this before I finish, or before I end. I'm just going to give this a black wash and kind of grime it all up. Point of fact, I might even put some of this in his armpits, because right now, I'm like under his head, because right now they don't look very dark. Shadowed. Um, but yeah, his, his big trick there was he took this music disc, put a, a jukebox in the center of a bunch of chance cubes, which are highly dangerous to break, because a lot of them had like bombs and things in them, um, right in the middle of their base, tosses the disc in and seals it in so that it's impossible to stop the music from playing uh, without potentially destroying everything that they've worked for the whole time. Now, that by itself was pretty good. But then when Lewis broke the chance cube on top, it, uh, it turned into a boat, and the block below it turned into water, which overwrote the jukebox playing the disc, didn't stop the music, and made it so that it was impossible to make it stop by normal means. That's clever. Like, that's, that's brilliantly clever. And like I feel like that deserves recognition. That's innovative. That's that's uh, you know unexpected. But like with GTA, he just gets out of his car, stands somewhere, and blows everything up. Like that's not funny. It's just aggravating to watch. You know. I don't know. Do I? Do any of you guys feel similarly? Do you, do you kind of know what I'm saying, or do I just sound like a crazy person complaining about some YouTuber playing a game in a way I don't like him to? <laughs> Like, is, is any of this in any way identifiable for any of you? <laughs> he is relatively pleasant, yeah. It's really a shame that he shaved off his, like, big lush beard that he used to have. He looked really good with that. Very distinct. Yeah, he's, uh, he looks different. <laughs> I mean, Shin, back in the day, Shin used to just kind of, I don't know, it was, it was really weird. He was very much sort of a follower, and he didn't really, he didn't really take much initiative, or at least he didn't appear to in the way that they framed him. I'm like, I kind of, I don't know how to read that, whether it's just a character that he was playing or if it's actually how he was. OK. 
Okay, got our silver paint all mixed up. Now let's dry brush it onto the metal. Metals. I think just fell. <laughs> There's nothing there. Losing my mind. Oh, really got a lot of bang for my buck with this brush full of paint. I had a lot more of it off the brush, but it's still still going. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still going. Somehow. Well, that spot at the small of his back came out looking real good, actually. So it's like a lot darker than the surrounding area, so it looks really uh, plausible, shall we say. Yeah? Thank you. Appreciate that. I don't know why I thought of this all of a sudden, but there was a long period of my life, like literally until I was about 14, when I genuinely believed the only good music was classical. Like, I grew up with my dad, like, singing classic rock songs to me. And I grew up on, on like, Power Rangers as well. But for some reason, like, it just never quite, it never quite sunk in that there were genres that aren't classical music that, that I'm allowed to like. Which is weird, because, like, I, I definitely liked not classical music, but, I, like, I didn't understand that. So, like, I tell people, you know, what, do you, what kind of music do you like? I tell people, like, classic or Celtic. Classical or Celtic. And, like, I wouldn't acknowledge any other answer. And then all of a sudden, I discovered the concept of good music that isn't classical, and it was just like, oh, everything's amazing! Um, there's still genres I absolutely hate, of course, but... Um, they are significantly fewer than they once were. <laughs> okay, that's good. Need a little bit of red for his gun. We'll use the scarlet for that. Oh, let's see, do we need to mix more? Yes, we need to mix more. That is dry. Yeah, I mean, I, I was exposed to a pretty wide variety. Like, I, I don't think that I had any 
any issues with like not knowing that other music existed, but it was just like it, nothing ever really. I don't know. It's it's weird because like I I don't have any reason to have felt like I did. But for some reason, that idea just stuck with me that, like, classical music is the only music I like. Despite being clearly incorrect, like, to this day, I adore the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme. Like, I think it's an amazing, comp like, metal composition. Like, it it's just, it's an excellent metal song. And, like, I understood then that I loved it, but I couldn't have told you why. You know, it was probably when I was about, about 16 that I really sort of found heavy metal music that I clicked with. And it was just like, oh, I like this. That's what that is. That's what this genre is that I like so much. Um, and then since then, you know, I've been a fiend. <laughs> Actually, I remember um, I found uh, Electric Light Orchestra compilation CD at the at the library, and like that was what kind of changed everything for me. Was discovering that they existed. Um, but I came to my dad in the late evening, shortly afterwards, uh, and brought him that CD and like recommended it to him, like he had never heard them before. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, Dad, I found the best band. Have you heard of them? And he's just like, yeah, they've been around for absolutely ever. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he indulged me, and, like, he, he was good about letting me kind of experience that. Jazz, oh, nice. I have some feelings about jazz. I I really like some jazz music, but like I also took a a college course about jazz and the professor was just such we'll just say he was a bit of a dingus. He was very opinionated about what qualified as jazz. So like he he had like an extra credit thing, which is like, go to a jazz concert and describe what you liked about it. But like, he had to vet the artist. Because if it wasn't jazz he liked, it didn't count as a jazz concert. It was the most idiotic thing. <laughs> um, and his favorite artist, I can't remember his name now, and that's probably a good thing because I'd get aggravated if I thought about him too hard. Um, but this, this musician, he's a guitarist, he was traveling with the Piety Street Band, and I went to see him because he was one of the approved artists, and he sucked! The band he was playing with was really good. Like, they had these really cool songs, um, like, they, they worked together as a band really well, and they were really kind of in sync with each other. And just really, they were on it. They were really on the ball. And this front man that they had had like a... I don't know if you guys have ever seen, like they're, they're like basically a foot pedal that you can use to, uh, to like loop your own instrument or whatever you record into it. And he used it to loop just these awful dissonant riffs. And he would just... He just completely took over the show and wouldn't let anybody else play for like an hour and a half. John Schofield, yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, that guy. Like, I was actually really excited to go to the concert because it was like, oh, I'm going to go and see like an actual jazz concert and this is going to be really cool. But then it was just this guy, like, he would not let his band play with him. He had to be the center of attention the entire show. And he sucked. 
Like, he was so bad. <laughs> like, is that an uncommon opinion? Because, like, the way that the professor talked about it, the second coming, like, he could do no wrong. He was the jazz musician, the only jazz musician that really did jazz, even though all improvisational music is jazz. It's, like, the only real jazz is John Schofield. Oh! Oh, I hated that concert. I, I love the Piety Street Band. They played great music. But, like, boy, they, they did not get their chance to shine. Ah, oh, cool. So Scarlett, I, I'm I am actually really curious. What was your opinion of John Schofield when you saw him? Like, did you did you have a similar experience, or was it completely different for you? Also, good news, everybody. We have a completed elephantoid. With what may or may not be a blood-soaked hammer. <laughs> Jazz covers of country songs. I mean, even if I like John Schofield, that doesn't sound like my jam. So, to be fair, I would probably hate that regardless of who was playing. But I can respect it. Here's our, here's our guy. With his, like, dead flat eyes. Mm, I think I can do his eyes better. Hang on a minute. Ooh, that's not better. Hang on. Ooh, that's better. Yeah, there we go. And I swear, every time I use that white paint, even thinned, it just leaves this, like, this tiny little dot on the end of my brush that I just can't get rid of. There we go, that pops out a lot better. He's got his grunge armor. Definitely a marine, this guy. I mean... Definitely a marine. <laughs> Giant, like, power hammer thing. 
All right. So he's actually not going to stay on his little plinth. Um, because I need to do his base in a weird way compared to what I would normally do. Um, particularly, I also need to color the bottom of it. Um, and I also have to use uh, crappy paint in order for it to properly match with everything else. So let's get our blue tack off of here. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to be dull coating him for a while. I'm going to do a batch of these guys. Normally I would dull coat it tonight, but... I'm not going to do that for the Battle Stations minis because that is just not going to work for the process that I've got. Okay. But yeah, otherwise, he's done. He can go with his buddies down there. So, uh, does anybody have any preferences for what we do next week? Um... I'm going to obviously give preference to Jesse, because these are actually his. Um, we've got four humans, four Zawalan cockroach guys. Uh, we've got a power armor, which is actually bigger than the elephantoid. Not by much, but just it's, it's Humpty Dumpty Iron Man. Um, and then we've got uh, a lupinoid, a meek, and a Kirbian. A Kirbite, excuse me. So what should I prepare for? Those are respectively, that's the Lupinoid. Uh, we've got the Powered Armor. That's our Meek. And that's the Kerbite. Um, then the the uh, Zawalans, I don't have a picture handy for, I don't think. Well, I've got no not that. That. These are the these are somebody else's painted minis. So the Zawalans I'm actually really not looking forward to doing. <laughs> Um, because they've got all of this like weird equipment stuff that's like super greebly and it's got a lot of tiny little bits on it. Uh, and it's kind of in the way of their midsection, so it's like really hard to paint their actual bodies. Because of all this, whatever this weird metal thing is sticking out of their, sticking off their arm. Why isn't the Kerbite Kirby? I don't know. But we've got a vote for Kerbite, we've got a vote for Lupinoid, we've got a vote for Roach. Uh, the Zawalans. Um, let me... Sorry, let me grab them there somewhere else. Uh, okay, here's one. I started these guys, and they came out terribly, so I need to strip the paint off of them and try again. But this is the gist of them. There's four of these guys that all have identical sculpts, um, so I would need to repaint their equipment to, uh, to reflect the different... Uh, different class colors. So, that's that's our options basically. Um the uh, the roaches again, I I don't know. I'm I'm inclined to do them off stream actually just because I think like, trying to provide decent commentary and doing all of their tiny little greebly bits would be really difficult to do at the same time. Um, but if that's what you guys want to see, then I will give it a shot. It'll probably take a few days to do all four of them uh, all on stream at once. But we can, we can give it a shot. I will leave it to the community to decide. In the meantime, though, um, it looks like my stream quality has tanked for no reason at all, so I think... Do, uh, do what? Do which? We've talked about several things just now. Quat eat. Quat eat.
No, no, I was just, um... Like, that's, that's uh, Jesse On's preference, and they are his, so I'm, I'm inclined to kind of kind of lean towards that a little bit, but at the same time, I, I don't think it would make as good streaming as literally any of the others. Um, so, I mean, like I said, if that's what you guys want to see, then we will go that route, but if not, then I will do something else. Um, it, it'd basically be probably at least two days, maybe three, um, of just doing Zawalans in batch paints. Um, which I don't think would be as fun uh, to to watch. Uh, the Meek? Um, yeah, maybe, but I do want to batch paint them. Like, I want to I want to do them in groups as much as possible. This is the Meek. He's got, like, a... He's basically a lion from Thundercats. Um... <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I can do just one of the one of the Zawalans at a time. Um, yeah, it, it is a very different process. The the batch painting. Um, I, I'm kind of planning to do the humans the same way, but I'm not really sure how much I want to do that. I am actually looking forward to doing the meek. I'm I'm curious about doing more fur effects after having worked on the brute last week. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm kind of excited to do that one. Um, the uh, the curbite's going to be quite a thing. <laughs> so it's bright green, bright pink, and bright purple. Yeah, yeah. They're from a different expansion. Sorry, I'm just undoing my. Uh... A previous bad decision over here. Because in from... what? What is it, like, Stars Without Number or something? No, not Stars Without Number, what is it? Is it Stars Without Number that I'm thinking of? Whatever that 4X is. Gosh. Yeah, so I, I tried, um... I think this was right after I got my paint set. I tried painting these guys, and just, I couldn't get it looking right, and then I painted this guy's arms a little bit, I overthinned the paint, so like, you can see all the, like, the primer showing through on this side. Oh, Starfleet Battles. But yeah, he's... he's bad. This is what all four of them look like, except that I only did the red on this guy. It was just like, I painted it on, it was just like, oh, gross! <laughs> They've got three arms, three eyes, three antennae, three legs. Only the two wings. But yeah, I need to, I need to strip the paint off those guys before we do anything else with them. Because now I have at least some idea of what I'm doing, and that would completely change my approach. Mostly... I just don't want to paint this thing and then have to also get my brush in between there. Like, that's going to be such a pain. <laughs> Everything else about these is fine. Like, they're, they're actually pretty easy. They don't have a lot of, a lot of different color blocks. But uh, that, that little bit with their multi-tool and their middle arm is just, like, that's going to be hell. <laughs> it's going to be so bad. So that is actually a big part of why I've put them off so long. <laughs> okay. Alright. We'll take the Meek on Monday. Meek Monday. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess we'll worry about the rest after that. So, okay. Um, I'm going to go for the night. But uh, have a good weekend, everybody. I'll see you again on Meek Monday.